Hi, this is Elsa and this is Graphic Novel Review. This month I chose This One Summer, which seemed like a fun read. It's a little bit more serious than I expected, um, but we'll get into that. So This One Summer is written by Mariko Tamaki and Jillian Tamaki is the illustrator and they're actually cousins. So the main character of this is Rose um, and she goes to this beach with her family um, every summer um, since she was little and that's her. Um, this summer in particular um, there seems to be like a lot of tension between her mom and her dad, her mom, her dad, and her. Um, a lot of just like tension, nothing's really like clear, like what's going on. Um, she has a friend named Wendy. Um, she's younger than her and they've been hanging out during the summers. Wendy is I think a year and a half younger than her. Um, like Rose is becoming a little bit more mature, having a little less patience with her friend. Um, seems like her patience is growing thin with Wendy. Um, and uh, Rose during the summer develops a crush. Uh, her family problems come to a head and uh, her relationship with her longtime friend gets a little um, tense. Uh, I would say that this book is about not exactly losing innocence, but kind of um, becoming a teen and uh, realizing, you know, things aren't just all fun and games. Um, it deals with some difficult topics, so this probably would be better for um, older middle school or just teens, because it does deal with some heavy subjects that maybe not everyone is ready for. story starts off with Rose who is traveling um, to Owago Beach with her family um, and you can just like sense some tension in the in the car when they're on their ride there like she's just uh, Rose is like biting her fingernails and mom's like fingers she's like doesn't like really interact with her and we get a sense that um, Owago is kind of, um, it, it's in the country. Um, there's there's like one corner store and there's like a pizza place and it's mentioned like the pizza place isn't even that good. Um, and this is coming from like Rose's point of view. So she kind of seems to be like not over going to the beach, but you can tell that things in her family are happening and doesn't, you know, she's, she doesn't seem like she's gonna have the greatest time. I'll mention that the whole entire uh, graphic novel is uh, pretty monochromatic. I do like the illustration style, but um, I feel like it's very intentional that it's just like, it's not a fun beachy color so like serious stuff is going on and i like how the illustrations kind of let you know that um but at owago beach um every summer she meets up with her like free-spirited friend wendy her mom's kind of like a hippie and she goes like on uh all like these healing retreats healing circles stuff like that so she's really free-spirited um you kind of get a sense from the interactions between uh, Wendy and Rose that, well, Wendy is a year and a half younger than Rose. And you can tell that um, Wendy is still like into doing child things. She's still into like pulling pranks and just giggling and getting into mischief. And Rose is a little bit like, I'm a teenager now, so I like teenager things. And like Wendy kind of mentions like, oh, you've changed so much. Like you're, you've grown and now your interests are more like teenager interests. Um, like they don't seem to have as much in common. Like Wendy is um, 
trying to like catch fish and like frolic and do stuff and Rose is kind of in her head. Um, so like I mentioned, there's only like one corner store, like one grocery store um, in Owago and Wendy and Rose kind of go there often because there's kind of not much to do but you know, go to the beach and run around in the woods. Um, so they start uh, just going there, getting their snacks, getting their Twizzlers, and then um, they start checking out horror movies. Um, and uh, and at this corner store, there is um, two boys that work there. There is one boy, we don't really get to know his name, another, uh, it's mentioned he's like 18, maybe a little bit older, um, and his name is Duncan or Dunk, um, but Wendy uh, calls him the Dud. The dud. And um, Rose kind of develops a crush on him. Um, like it doesn't seem like a hardcore crush, but they um, uh, start frequenting this corner store a little bit more. Um, I mean, there's really not much else to do, um, but uh, Rose makes it a point to go kind of frequently and they start checking out horror movies. So that gives them an, ex an excuse to go to the corner store, like to return the movie, pick out another movie. And we get a sense that, you know, uh, Wendy's more like a preteen, uh, like a tween and uh, Rose is becoming a teenager um but and we see that uh rose is kind of really interested in what the teenagers of owago um are like up to like she hears these conversations that are very like teenage conversations probably conversations that you wouldn't have around children um it's pretty realistic um but you can tell that like her mindset is changing. She's like interested in what the teens are talking about, which are more adult things. And Wendy's kind of just not having any of it. She's like, I'm a kid. Why are you using these words around me? Um, but there are two teenage boys that work at the corner store and uh, Rose becomes kind of obsessed with Dunk, Duncan, or what Wendy, how Wendy calls him. Um, the dud. So during all this summer fun stuff, it, trying to happen, trying to have fun, um, you really notice that Rose's family is going through something. We don't really um, have a good understanding of it until pretty much the end, but her mom's just like very short. She like seems uncomfortable with just being at the beach in general, interacting with um, Rose's father interacting with Rose she's kind of like short with both of them like Rose will come up to hug her from behind and the mom kind of like gets uncomfortable and shoes her away um dad's like trying to cheer everybody up but Rose seems very upset that her mom is acting this way which makes it seem like it's been going on for quite some time. Since Rose and Wendy are going to this corner store so often, they're witnessing like the teen dramas, um, like the town's uh, teens dramas. Uh, the dad has a girlfriend and um, one day when they're buying like some gummy worms, uh, she comes by pretty angry and they have like a conversation and then, um, it seems like drama and um, it seems like the dud's girlfriend um, is pregnant and uh, Rose gets very invested in this. Um, she kind of takes his side because um, he's doesn't feel like he's responsible or that he's the father. Um, and Wendy's kind of like, that's adult things. I'm not interested, Rose, you're being weird. Um, but um, things with her family finally boil over when her uh, mother's sister comes to visit. Her mom, for some reason, is really on edge at the beach and her sister's um, uh, boyfriend 
is kind of like insisting um, that Rose's mom get up and come to the beach and he's like trying to pull her like, hey, I'm not taking no for an answer. Let's go for a swim. Um, and Rose's mom gets really upset and ends up pushing uh, her sister's boyfriend and she kind of just storms off. Rose's dad storms after her. And then after that, um, Rose's dad says that he has to go back home for work. So then it's just Rose and her mom at the um, uh, summer home. This is when you find out that Rose's parents were trying to have a, another child and um, their mom was going through in vitro and um, they all of a sudden stopped trying and that's when things begin to get a little tense with her family and Rose seems really upset about it like why do you want to have another kid was I not good enough she she just seems very upset but she doesn't seem she Rose doesn't seem all that aware about what's going on truly within her family so Rose and her mother are not really spending time together when after their dad after the dad leaves um so she yells at her mom at some point you're making things super uncomfortable mom and um, I wish you would have left instead of dad because dad's trying to have fun. So they get into an argument and then uh, Rose and Wendy go to like this um, historic village. I think it was a, oh, it was like a Windop village. Um, so they just go and they're having fun, kind of thinking they're too old to be going to this historic site. And then they notice, or at least Rose notices that uh, Dud's girlfriend uh, works there and by now it's kind of gone around town that she may be pregnant and um, she gets heckled by some towns people some teenagers from the town uh, making like inappropriate remarks and the, the girlfriend runs off and Rose kind of follows after her um, and then she sees that there's this guy friend that this, that Dud's girlfriend has, and he's like consoling her. And he says, well, don't worry about it. Give him time. He'll call you. Cause Dud's not, um, reaching out to her at all, talking to her even. So Wendy and Rose are hanging out. You can tell that they are. So Wendy and Rose, um, are hanging out at the beach and she tells her what she saw. She says that Dud's girlfriend is probably cheating on Dud um, and that the child isn't his. And it's kind of odd because um, she seems to be very like set in what she thinks. She's kind of like, yeah, so that girl is cheating on Duncan and she deserves that he's not talking to her and Wendy who you know they've been friends for a very long time kind of just calls her out on it and it's like that's not okay like where where are you getting all this information from she's like Rose says uh, I saw uh, the girlfriend hugging this guy and Wendy says um well, she's just being consoled. They, she was probably very upset. This seems like an upsetting situation. Like looking at this, like in a very childlike way as like, she's scared. She doesn't know about her future. So she's being consoled by a friend. That's it. So Rose has a crush on Duncan. So she's kind of like, no, um, she's cheating and she deserves it, blah, blah, blah. blah. And uh, then she says, well, she's a slut, all of the girls from this town are sluts. And uh, Wendy, who is, you know, a child points it out and she's like, that's mean. That's a mean thing to say about someone. And also it's sexist. And then Rose kind of just like brushes her off as she's been doing throughout the whole entire book. And um, Wendy just kind of has it and she's like, well, I'm gonna take off. And she leaves uh, Rose at the beach all by herself. 
Um, so there's kind of like a rift between them, these longtime friends. Um, so Rose goes by herself to rent a movie um, at the corner store and the dud is there along with his friend. She sneaks into the corner store's like backyard area. There's like this dirty uh, gaming console and on the screen she writes, or she begins to write, um, I think she's cheating. And and before she can finish, Duncan comes out and it's like, hey, you shouldn't be back here and she runs away. Um, but she doesn't have time to finish um, writing. She, I think she's cheating. Um, so she doesn't get to finish writing the message, which I thought was very bold of her and very petty of her. I mean, this is like the age where you're kind of doing things impulsively and uh, yeah, um, she ends up going home after that and she finds out that her dad is there and her dad and her mom are like on the couch having like a very serious conversation. He's like, who's gonna help me build a bonfire? And uh, so uh, Rose's family and Wendy's family are having like this bonfire. It's, you know, the end of the summer, they're about to head home in a couple of days. Um, so they're just, this is their end of the summer celebration. Um, it seems like the town teenagers are also having like the end of the summer celebration. Um, so they're collecting wood. Um, and then Rose's mom asks her to uh, go get milk at the corner store or something for like a snack or marshmallows, something like that. And um, uh, they're, as they're waking, making their way to the corner store, there's like tension between Wendy and Rose where you can tell that Wendy feels hurt, that her friend is like maturing and kind of, you know, trying to act cool and not totally um, having as much in common together. So while they're at the corner store, they grab what they need, leave some cash on the on the counter because all the teenagers, including Duncan, are having fun drinking um, outside of the corner store. And as they're taking off, the dad's girlfriend shows up. She's She seems like she's drunk and is trying to get Duncan's attention and like you need to take responsibility and this is your baby and then he just responds really terribly saying like i don't believe you you need proof it's just saying all kinds of horrible things well rose and wendy witness this rose and wendy um make it back to their site on the beach where everyone's having a bonfire eating marshmallows having a great time rose walks off um towards the beach and then she sees something. She sees a person in the water that looks like they're drowning. Um, so she yells out for her mother. Um, her mother jumps in uh, to the water, saves the person that was drowning. And that person turns out to be Duncan's girlfriend, um, who we don't know if she purposefully went into the water um, or was accidental because she was drinking quite a lot. Um, so everything kind of settles down. Uh, Duncan's girlfriend is getting help and uh, Wendy's mom and uh, Rose's mom are talking inside. Uh, they think they've put the girls to bed. Wendy's asleep. Rose is eavesdropping on their conversation and uh, Rose's mother confesses that um, she actually miscarried um, while she was swimming the year prior at this very beach. Um, and neither the mom or uh, Rose's dad have told Rose about this. Rose hears this entire conversation and kind of just goes to bed. So then we go back to uh, Rose and Wendy and uh, Rose's kind of trying to win Wendy back. Um, Wendy's digging like a super deep hole uh, in the sand and uh, Rose comes to join her and just to be silly. 
um, kind of realizing that being like a grown up or being a teenager is um, rough, that it's hard. And she kind of wants like a, the end of summer to be more like it used to be, funner, more childlike. And then she returns her final movie, horror movie um, to the corner store. So it's not a cashier. Um, at that time, which maybe hints to the fact that maybe he is taking responsibility for, uh, you know, his, his girlfriend and that situation. And after that, Rose and her family head home, as does Wendy and her family. Um, so really, this one summer is about growing up and seeing things in a very different, from a very different perspective. Um, and maybe growing up too fast and not really that that isn't fun. So there are very frank conversations about sex, sexuality, mental health, and miscarriage. I mean, they're handled pretty appropriately for who the audience is. I think the recommended age is 12 to 18, but you use your best judgment. Um, I do like the illustrations. They're a little sketchy. They don't look entirely like, um, like initial sketches. Sometimes they have like a few words and like a big illustration. It's, I like the way it's drawn. Um, and again, I like how it's monochromatic. Um, overall, it's not a fun summer read. It's not easy. It's not light, but I think it's good if, um, you want a little bit more of a serious read from the perspective of someone who's um, pretty young. Um, I have included some read likes. Um, not all of them are as serious as this one. They're a lot more lighthearted, including Mariko Tamaki's Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. So that is the review for this one summer. Let me know what you think and thank you for watching.